Gamer Magazine is chatting to, to Duncan Smith from School Advisor, nice and early. How are you today, Duncan? Very well, and you, Dan? I can't complain. Duncan, let's start off. You are an educator by trade. Um, you, you taught for nine years overseas, all in all. Yeah, something like 10. Well, no, overseas, overseas, eight years. Eight yeah, years. About 10 years in total. Okay. Let's start off yeah. by why did you decide to become a teacher? Um, well, back in the day, I was at UCT and really, um, English is passions. I, I read prolifically. Uh, and so I did, I did a BA in, in English and history. And then, you know, once you, once you uh, do a BA degree, once you complete your BA degree, it's sort of, you know, what's next? So I was thinking, oh, journalism, do I go into academics or whatever? And I think, you know, I, I realized that I really, you know, I did a lot of coaching when I was at Varsity. <clears throat> and then I realized that uh, I really love working with, with young people. Um, and teaching would afford me the opportunity to, to do that and also to be involved in, uh, in a lot of sports coaching as well. Uh, which is also a big passion of mine. Well, we'll get to the coaching now. Um, yeah. You, you, you did, you, off the top of my head, you taught in England, South Korea, the Solomon Islands, as well as South Africa. Yes. What are the pros right. and cons for going overseas to teach? And what are the differences between education abroad and education in South Africa? Oh, that's, that's, quite a, that's quite a big question. Um, let's yeah, let's start with the, the first part. What are the, what are the pros and cons for going overseas? I, I went overseas straight after university, so that was it was quite daunting. I was in the UK, um, and uh, I mean I, I still remember my first day in the UK. I was walking with my suitcases and going to this new house where I was going to stay, and I knew nobody. And I was walking, and there was one of these girls in the sort of blue earrings, and uh, she. I almost walked into her and she went, look, where the hell are you going? You know, and I, I didn't expect such a, such a strong response. So it's, you know, I mean, that sort of draws attention to the fact that it's difficult to be on your own in a, in a culture that's different uh, to one's own um, on the difficult side. But then on the, on the nice side as well, you know, if you, you're overseas, it's so, you know, it's stimulation overload. It's a new experience. Um, you know, that essentially that was my first uh, teaching job, which was quite eye-opening um, as well, uh, just to see how things are done differently uh, in different countries in terms of education. Uh, obviously, in the first world in particular, when we're talking about England and South Korea and so forth, they obviously there's, there's a lot of money in education, so they can have all the smart boards and projectors and, you know, all the technology. Which Obviously, as, as a teacher, it opens up a lot more possibilities in terms of your teaching. Um, but then, you know, if I compare it to the Solomon Islands, which is very much a developing island, um, you, you have to be more creative because then you don't, you don't have all of those resources. So you, you depend a lot more on your colleagues. Uh, you, you, know, you work a lot more together to, you know, to uh, improve teaching or be innovative or, you know, yeah. What would you? What did you prefer most? Did you prefer teaching in a first world country, or did you prefer the island life and teaching in, in a developing in, on a developing island? Uh, yeah, I'd have to say that I, I preferred. I think of all my teaching experiences, both in South Africa and abroad, probably the Solomon Islands, which is the most recent, that probably has uh, has an impact, but uh, was was my favourite. Um, because not only was I involved in, in teaching, I was also involved in, in training and so, you know, assisting the, my, my colleagues who, because the local universities are not fantastic, uh, they're not, teachers are not very well equipped to teach. So they don't, I mean, like the idea of a lesson plan is, is a foreign concept. So I think for us as expat teachers, there were a couple of us which were, sort of employ not only to, to teach, um, I, I was the head of the English department, but a large part of my job was actually equipping the local teachers. Yeah. And so for me, probably the highlight of my teaching career was actually was doing that and actually seeing the teachers grow uh, and improve in their teaching ability. Yeah. Now, I've got no experience in teaching, but I have a friend who's currently doing her teaching prax and all she complains about mm -hmm. is those lesson plans. So, um, let, let, let's go, let's move along to your coaching. Obviously, 
being a teacher in South Africa, uh, I mean, one of your one of your roles is as a coach. Um, you generally help out after school, whether it's sport or cultural or academic stuff. Um, yes. You went into coaching, and what sports did you coach? Yeah, so uh, I mean, first first year varsity, just to give you a little context, I, I, I worked in a pub like everybody else. Uh, and then one one night, um, I was working. One of the girls I was working with said, "You know, Ronda Bosch Boys Prep School. We're looking for for cricket coaches." And I thought, "Well, I've played, played a lot of cricket in my life. I really enjoy it. Let me give uh, give this coaching thing a go." And and from the get go, I just yeah, it was just fantastic being able to pass on the skills that I had learned, uh, you know, in school and at university playing cricket. Um, to pass that on to to youngsters, so so cricket is really um, say my favourite sport both to, to play and to coach, um, and then and then rugby as well. So at university I was privileged to to coach both of those sports predominantly at at Ronnebosch, which is my old alma mater, and then uh, I was very lucky to get involved with uh, Ryan Marin's Cricket School of Excellence, um, and to do a lot of, a lot of cricket coaching for for him as well. It definitely sounds like you're a man who, who likes to help the next generation um, find mm. a foothold as, as they grow. Um, Duncan, what, what would you say your coaching philosophy is? What is important for you to, to, to yeah. leave for your, for your athletes? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of coaches can be very top down. You know, they think that they they've got all the answers, and they you know they're sort of imparting their their knowledge and and their wisdom. Um, so I think that sometimes you've got to let um, players sort of figure things out by themselves as well. Sort of you know put the put the basics in place. Uh, if you look at batting in cricket, for example, and how many different styles there are. You know, if you take I mean if you compare it to golf, and you look at a guy like Bubba Watson for those. You know, you know, people who are, you know, who are familiar with him, whatever he, you know, he never was never taught how to play golf, uh, and he kind of taught himself. So I think it's important for for any player of any sport to to really develop their own style. You know, they must have the basics, which is obviously I'm quite strong on that, but they also must have themselves and to, you know, I mean, to not if they're doing something slightly different, not to hop on and say, okay, you, you know, that's that's not how we do it or whatever. Uh, and then I think probably the biggest thing is to have fun. I mean, I think I've been very privileged in my life to be very involved in lots of different sports and really to just get the, the enjoyment of playing that sport, developing my skills and also being part of a team. And we're just about to talk about School Advisor. Duncan, uh, mm. you returned from teaching in the Solomon Islands to South Africa uh, yeah. and you took up a role at School Advisor. So. Uh, as, when I was reading through the information you sent me, the best way to describe school advisor is basically like a LinkedIn for educators. Um, would yeah. that would that be a fair assumption to make? Well, I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's interesting that you say that because it's you know one of the things that I've been thinking about when I, when I talk to people and I tell them what I do, and it's such a it, it becomes such a long spiel, you know, sort of so you know we connect. We connect companies that supply goods and services to schools, to schools around South Africa, and you know you can see people switch off before you sort of finish. So, um, more, more than LinkedIn, I would say it's it's schools meets TripAdvisor. So okay. I think maybe if you if you amalgamate those two things, that, then that's essentially in a nutshell what what we're all about. Okay, but then you say uh, goods and services. Uh, is that like yeah. everyday stuff from? pencils and textbooks mm -hmm. to to like stuff with the sports fields like is it just basically stuff to help the school to function as, as a school yeah it, it is it is literally everything I think when when uh, when we started the company we didn't realize how big the scope is I mean at the moment we're working on a marketing campaign for for square one architects they're a landscape architect company based in Cape Town and they're doing amazing work in schools um, so, you know, think, I mean, that, that would have never been on our radar, you know, Peter and I would have never thought, oh yeah, let's look at landscape architects, you know, so I mean, yeah. as you say, you know, the obvious things come to mind, the pencils and, and the computer, 
sofas and the white, you know, even like the toilet paper and the bathrooms and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But there's been, a, there's been a lot of exciting things happening, in, you know, in terms of companies doing interesting things in schools um, that we never even would have thought of, you know, things like leadership development in schools, you know, yeah. um, there's, there's some really exciting things happening. Yeah. Why? Why was School Advisor put together? What is what? What was the idea behind it? Yeah, well, that that that's exactly the question that we we love people to ask because uh, it really is uh, you know, and it really is his his brainchild. So I was in the Solomon Islands last year, and uh, and we were just you know catching up on on Facebook, just having a chat. And he said, look, I, you know, I've had this idea for a company. You know, what do you think? I could use your, you know, edu educational mind. Um, and and as soon as he told me, I thought, wow, this the, this is really something that can be of value in, in um, because notoriously, a lot of schools, not not all, but a, a lot of schools, a lot of events, a lot of um, educators are bad at sourcing and buying the things that they need. Um, because and it's not not that they're bad at it. It's just that their focus is on education, as as it should be. You know, their passion is education. Um, and so, inevitably, to give you a scenario, what happens? You know, uh, a school needs internet implementation. You know, and so it's like, okay, well, who do we go to? Or you know, uh, who do we for the installation and all that kind of stuff? And then inevitably, one teacher says, oh, you know, my my cousin does internet or I have a friend or whatever and then the cousin comes and does the internet implementation and and is possibly not not the best person for the job doesn't do a great job and a year or two down the line and they've got to rip it all up and do it all again because they didn't they didn't make a, a wise choice and they're just spending way too much money on products that they don't really need or it's the wrong products or you know um, yeah, there's no uh, there's no points in you know buying a whole bunch of iPads for your schools, and then the teachers are like, great, we've got iPads, now what? Yeah, you know, so it's that that kind of thing, you know. So okay, we've got the iPads, now who do we go to for training? Because our teachers need to be trained how to how to use these iPads um, mm -hmm. to really enhance their teaching, you know. And an iPad's not a teacher, uh, effectively. So that's yeah, a little bit about yeah you know, where the sort of division came from. Okay. And then let's say, uh, let's say for instance, I'm a school. I'm a Dan Daniel Secondary School, and uh, mm -hmm. I want to join School Advisor. What is the process? How does it work? Uh, so yes, um, so that School Advisor is available for all schools, for all educators in South Africa. We're in the process of expanding sort of into Southern Africa as well, and hopefully in the future, it is available to all teachers. It is completely free for schools really because uh, our, our mandate or our um, <clears throat> our vision is to be of service to schools to help schools buy better to make better purchasing decisions yeah. and then also to help the companies that are doing a really great job in in the school sector um, so we're trying to we're trying to match those two uh, yeah. together so as a school uh, you don't have to register or anything like that, and you use it um, as you please. Um, one of the things that really makes School Advisor work uh, very well is the review process. Um, so I think you know, if I can put in a little plug for School Advisor, if you know their educators listening to this, um, if they if they would go onto the site and write a review for their for their favorite company or a company that um, that is doing a really great job in their particular school. Yeah, no, for sure. And how can they get into contact with you? You've got a website, obviously. Are you on social media? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got we got our website www.schooladvisor.co.za, and we are prolific on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, etc. Yeah. So the people, so somebody just needs to go onto your website, and whatever they need is there. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Okay, and and where? Where do you where do you guys what is your vision for for school advisor when we well, while we're ending off now well, where would you like school advisor to to go is there something like a my school thing how it's been I mean if you look at my school it's pretty become pretty entrenched I know it's not the same yeah. company but it's it's become yes. I mean it's captured the hearts and minds of of the, the of the educational yeah. system in South Africa 
and pretty much every school has it now. Is that yeah. is that what you want to see for School Advisor? Look, Dan, I'm not at liberty to talk about that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, I think I think our vision, our, our primary vision is to be, be to be of, of service to the people that we serve. So the schools in South Africa to really help them to get the products and services that they need, um, you know, at the right price. Um, and then also to, you know, very important is to help the companies that are, you know, that are providing those goods and services. So I think, you know, really our long-term vision is to continue to do that. We are obviously constantly making changes to, to our site and the way that we do things. Um, maybe in the future there might be, uh, we might be running conferences for, um, yeah. for, the, um, for the companies and for educators to kind of match those two up. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, we're sort of, we're constantly evolving and changing, but I yeah. think, you know, as, as we are a relatively new company, um, the, you know, there'll be a lot of changes yeah. in the future. Well, Duncan, I can tell you for a fact that Gamer Magazine does a lot of work with universities and, and school athletes, mm -hmm. so there will definitely be educators watching this. So educators, yeah. uh, my challenge to you is, uh, if you ever need something for your school, whether it be iPads, iPad training, manure for the, for the sports fields, or just general toilet paper, please give School Advisor uh, a look on their website or social media. And let's, uh, let's, help, a, let's help a young South African company um, grow. Duncan, I just wanna, I'm from Game On Magazine. We'd just like to thank you for your time. It was really nice speaking to you, and um, we look forward to seeing the growth of School Advisor. Thanks very much, Dan. Great to talk to you too. Thanks, Duncan. Cheers.